everyone thank you for joining the third fontra demo public demo um we will structure that in like three to four parts i'll have an introduction um we have a, a middle section where my colleague uh, Gaetan bear from um, black foundry will do a drawing demo and uh, um, i'll start with the uh, in introduction and talk about new features uh, etc so that's roughly the schedule we'll um, plan to be ready with the formal part of the presentation in about 45 minutes so that we'll have about 15 minutes left for discussion um, the chat should be open we will start responding like in, in the uh, final part but um, feel free to already check whether that in fact works um, last time we had a hiccup in that uh, uh, regarding the chat that the ch I'm, I'm uh, other people are mon monitoring the chat. I'm not looking at it myself, um, but the chats should be open. I hope that it all works. Anyway, let's let's get going. Um, so, um, as usual, I'm starting with the website fontra.xyz, which uh, uh, there's a couple more links now. It's it's uh, uh, it's it's kind of outgrowing its concept as a single page thing. Uh, we have uh, some work in progress user documentation. Uh, which I'll uh, show uh, in a second. Um, we have fresh downloads upload from like a couple hours ago. We have a Discord server that uh, um, we'll try to to populate and keep active and uh, um, uh, be there for live questions. Um, let's let's briefly go to the documentation side. This was set up by uh, Gustavo Ferreira, and um, um, I. Uh, we've actually just two weeks ago welcomed Oli Meyer to the Fontra team uh, from Berlin. He's he's joining us to help us out with uh, both coding, design, but also he, today he made some um, um, additions to the the user documentation. Um, installation should be relatively uh, the, the, sorry. There there are download links at the Fontra.xyz site, but um, like. Um, the Windows package needs a little bit of um, there's so yeah uh, this briefly shows the way where you should go to get a download uh, for macOS is pretty straightforward. Um, however, on Windows it it does work, um, but we're not yet an official registered developer, so Windows will throw all some, uh, sorts of warnings at you that you can relatively easily circumvent by following these uh, simple instructions. So, um, should work. Um, back to so yeah, there's uh, uh, again a work in progress. There's a, a, a page about shortcuts. There's some introduction for various tools. This will grow as we go along. Um, yeah, so uh, installation, um, Discord, uh, website, um, link to our GitHub site. There's still the, um, our API slides that kind of give you an insight. If, if Fontra is relatively new, the whole concept is new to you. This explains a bit how it's technically set up. It has some block diagrams of how the application is structured. Anyway, let's... Uh, let's uh, um, start with some actual stuff. So uh, Fontra Pack is the main form of Fontra that uh, we will be working with today. I mean, we, um, as I've explained before, we also have, uh, we use internally an online deployment. Uh, so Fontra is, is modular. We can deploy it in different ways. Uh, at the moment, the most uh, easy thing is to download the application, uh, which is called Fontra Pack. And if you open it, it looks like this. You can drop um, UFO or design space or uh, glyphs files or TTFs. I mean, some formats we can only read, other files we can read and write. Um, if you've played with Fontra Pack before, um, there's a brand new button called New Font. Um, and I will immediately start by using it. So um, if I click that button, I will get a kind of save as dialogue and I can navigate to, I will just uh, demo new font, um, demo font. Uh, that's, so we can actually choose a couple. These are the formats we can actually write. 
UFO will be limited to uh, not being uh, variable. There's uh, uh, Fontra is our um, um, internal, the Fontra native file format. Uh, RCJK is um, um, also an internal format that's more legacy, but we uh, we use that for internal projects. So um, the Fontra format is based on JSON. Um, it's all text format. Anyway, let's let's for now just start a design space uh, based form uh, um, a project. Let's call it it. Let's save it, and then it will open a browser window. And now we have a blank font that contains no glyphs. And let's. Uh, uh, Let's just focus on a single letter. So we can double click it. Gives you as a prompt whether we actually want to do it. We can go to our pen tool. Um, quickly draw something. And let's see. So edit, of course, we can also, there's like alt click if you use the pen tool uh, you, like a regular click will insert a, a, a corner point but if you alt click it will turn this into um, a curve um what is very new is we have a menu bar here um there's uh, okay yeah let's start with what i mean there's here two menus that are not hooked up yet um here there's the the, the, the classic edit menu um, we have some view options um, largely corresponding with the, the tools. Um, yeah, a select previous source. Okay, we don't have multiple sources here yet. Um, font info. This is something very new, uh, also work in progress. Uh, um, the, the big word is font info. This, when I go there, I actually open a new tab. Uh, there are three sections. Only one is currently functional. I mean, we go currently to the access editor. Uh, there is a placeholder for family info uh, under construction sources. But anyway, access is uh, brand new, merged today. Um, and since I opened a new project, we don't have any variation axes. So I can click the button, new axis, and it will give me options from uh, five standard axes, or I can. Um, uh, create the name and the open type tag um, manually. Let's just create a weight axis, let's add it. And then here we get this UI that uh, allows you to customize the settings of this axis. We can uh, change the minimum value, the default, the maximum. Uh, there's stuff about the map uh, mapping. I will show that later with an existing uh, font uh, axis values we can edit. Um, an axis can be discrete or continuous. This can be switched over. Let's uh, just stick with this for now. So this is kind of a basic, I will stick with the defaults now. So it opened a new tab. We currently do not have a button to go back. That is uh, something that we should need, but the, the, the tab where I started is still open. So here we are. And now if I go to my design space navigation, um, panel uh, I will see I see the new axis right here so we can of course we haven't designed anything on the the, the axis we only have the default drawing I will now just create a master for this glyph only at the maximum weight by clicking on the plus button here and I will just briefly um, edit this to make it bolder um, so yeah, I just created the, the axis out of nothing. So, okay, we have um, a working variable glyph here. Um, so yeah, that's um, um, creating axis on the fly that is that is, that is brand new in the info. Um, let's go through um, other, let's, uh, what else? Let, let's go briefly through the, the, um, the menu bar. Um, there's an add source, delete source, edit local axes that kind of corresponds with these controls here. Um, we have a plugin manager. I will briefly go there. And um, but you know we have um, the intention was also today to have at least one demo plugin where uh, we run into uh, ran into a snag uh, where we cannot properly demo it. There's there's a bug that needs to be fixed. But soon we will have a fairly complete example plugin that we can install. So uh, at the moment, we would support plugins hosted on, on GitHub. You would uh, type or copy a path 
and um, that plugin would install. Anyway, that's still fairly limited, but um, um, some of it is working. So extensions, uh, help. Okay, here we find links. The homepage is fontra.xyz. Documentation is the link to the document user, user documentation site I just showed. Uh, GitHub will go to the main uh, GitHub repository. So we have a bunch of repositories, but if you find bugs, uh, the best way to start place to start is to open an issue in the main Fontra repository. Uh, or if you have feature requests, uh, feel free to either start this. Or if you have questions, there's also a discussions forum. If you think, uh, if you're not sure if you found a bug or you just have a question, open a discussion here. Um, if you want to contribute, you can open pull requests. So anyway. Um, that is the the menu bar um where did i want to go okay yeah so uh, another new feature is in the info panel we have uh, side bearings that we can edit um let's see uh, so um you know i, I didn't draw uh, an extreme point here so we don't have okay this gives us nicely integer side bearings uh, that can be edited um, and um, by the way, um, they we can also edit them. So I currently have two sources. Um, I can edit them both at the same time, and that includes the side bearing. So um, if I change this to 50, so that would be 10 less, that would make uh, reduce all the side bearings in all selected sources by 10 units. However, there is a, a button here. I mean, there's potentially, uh, especially for components and variable components, lots more information here. But there's this checkbox that says multi-source value changes are absolute. That means that if I type a value here that is, for instance, 100, that means uh, that all the selected uh, sources selected for editing with a little pencil icon will be 100. So if I now switch, uh, um, ooh. It's not 100. OK, great. Um, we have a little bug there, of course. This used to work at least somewhat, but um, I don't know what uh, went wrong there. Probably some rounding issue. Let me see if uh, if indeed the, the um... OK, let me try again. So both are in edit mode, multi-source values. Let's, let me see if this is working better. This is working better. So anyway, we have a problem to solve with uh, non-integer coordinates and non-integer bounding boxes. Live demos, you always find the bugs as you go along. This is a pretty new feature. But anyway, uh, Gaetan will later also demonstrate multi-source editing. Um, in the meantime, um, let's see where we were okay um uh, instead of uh, uh, so this was a a new font from scratch let, let me briefly go to finder so this folder i just made um we cre the uh, font I created the design space file it created two sources um the names are a little bit funny there's uh, that that will um improve later once we have uh, a better way to uh, deal with source information. So it kind of makes it up based on the access value. I mean, these are just valid UFO files. They each contain a single glyph. But uh, where I wanted to go is to go to an existing font. So this is uh, um, a Gitto from Black Foundry. Let me uh, go here. Um, so this has uh, a bunch of axes. And what I actually want to demo is the axis editor. So I'm going to font info. And we see we have three axes, the weight axis, the width axis, and the slant axis. And the weight axis has a mapping. This will translate to an AVAR mapping. So this is slightly non-linear. Um, uh, we see a graph here that is currently not editable. And here, this is the same information in list form. Um, the graph is uh, hints of interactivity. The plan is to make uh, uh, make these clickable and draggable so that you can edit these values by, just by click and drag. At the moment, we're going to have to um, just numerically edit them. Uh, let's see how we can mess it up. 
that's how we can mess it up. Um, th this this whole UI is still a little bit little bit rough. I mean, we need some. It's it's currently quite possible to create settings that are invalid. Like, I mean, uh, an AVAR mapping is not allowed to uh, go back. So this is an invalid mapping. Um, but uh, um, so uh, we have full undo support here. Not yet a menu bar, but undo works. So uh, redo undo. Uh, so that's uh, that's pretty nice. Um, axis values. I will show that based on another um, uh, font. Uh, these uh, sometimes the order of axes matters. We could, these panels are drag and droppable, so I can reorder, and this will actually reflect the. Let, let me get this tab out uh, as a separate thing. This will this will reflect dynamically. So look at that order with weight slant. I'm now gonna drag the slant axis all the way to the top and you see it's kind of um because you know the the order indeed so, uh, uh, sometimes matters um and uh, usually people have a, a very specific preference of how how things should be ordered anyway let's put this tab back where it came from um what else based on the access editor let's uh okay let's go back to the original the access values um so this is um so the, the the mapping is well once you're compiling to ttf or otf this is about the avar table how you can kind of create uh non-linear or you can adjust to user expectations uh, anyway there's lots of things possible um the axis values is about giving labels to values on the axis. This relates to the stat table. Um, so we can define, for instance, let, let, me, let me start by, for instance, uh, the uh, regular would be at 400, uh, but light might be at, uh, okay, the minimum is 200, so maybe that. I'm just making this up. I don't really know what for this particular font would be appropriate. I'm going to just put them in the max. The list keeps uh, keeps itself in sorted order by value. Um, the other columns are uh, more meaningful. The, the, the more you understand about the stat table, um, it, a, a name can belong to a range of values. It can be potentially linked to another value. The stat table is its own world and is, is pretty complicated. I cannot uh, do it justice uh, in one sentence and, and probably cannot do it justice anyway because it's a pretty tough subject. Um, anyway, let me briefly go to this other font, uh, Grotesque, also by Black Foundry, um, because it has uh, uh, also quite interesting. So you see, it's kind of, this has a kind of interesting axis mapping and it has the axis values all filled in for instance yeah so it has all these names for weight values it it, ha it has uh this font has um, uh, very peculiar custom names for, for a certain widths part of the design concept it also has a slant axis where the, there is a back slant upright and slant um this checkbox the leadable means that, that if you're at that value then this name na name can be um, left out, likewise, regular. You don't have to call it regular if you're at regular. Um, I think the length value means here that if you're style linking, that when going to bold, that you're going from 400 to 700. Uh, the details of that is always a little bit unclear to me. Anyway, I, um, how am I doing on time? Um, yeah, I should be very close to the first to the end of the first section of this demo um so yeah um this uh is fairly complete in terms of functionality um as usual when working uh, with your own data make sure you have a backup or that you are working on data that is uh, uh synchronized by git so you can that in case uh, fontra messes it, it up you can revert to older versions that's always a good idea there's uh one thing i briefly wanted to Point out another relatively new feature. If we draw, okay, I need to go to a source. So uh, the pen tool. Uh, new feature is that we can use Shift now to create uh, straight and perfectly diagonal lines. So just a tiny little thing. Of course, now I immediately made it this glyph not interpolatable anymore. So we get a little bug icon that will 
tell us something generic. This is something that we will be working on that there will, there will be a better uh, debugging tool to, to more easily find out if something is not interpolatable, what uh, the actual problem is. Uh, so at the moment we have a cute icon that says something is wrong. But you don't get all that much extra information at this moment. Anyway, um, this let me briefly check my notes. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to switch over to uh, to Gaetan, who is hopefully ready to for his part of the demo. Um, I will stop presenting and we'll give the screen to Gaetan. Welcome, hi Gaetan. Hi, hello Excuse everyone. Gaetan is in Paris. I'm in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. All spread out, of course, as is. Uh, so take it away. I don't see your screen yet, but I bet it's coming so, soon. Um, I think you see now. Maybe. It's coming. Yeah, I will mute my microphone and uh, please go oh. ahead. So let's go. So for this demo, uh, I will try to, uh, to write a word and full. Uh, and full. For this, I prepared already the O and the N. But we will do the other letter, and the idea is to do it with three variation axes. The first one will be a rounded axis, the second one will be ink traps, and the third one will be a uh, pinch axis. And uh, the idea is to see how to work or to deal with the with the deep edition mode, like um, editing multi source in the same time. Uh, so let's start with this. Um, I will make the a first, so the, for this demo, the A will be just a single story. And uh, we can just select a glyph here, copy it, and paste it on the A, and it will become, uh, we will have the shape inside, but it's still the A glyph, same Unicode. Then we can go inside, and of course, we can double click on a stroke, on a stem in the N, and paste it here, and the A is, is done. Uh, now, what we will do is to add new axes and make it rounded here. Uh, so to add new axes, we go in font info, axis, new axis, and I will make a custom one, indeed, round, and round it again. I will keep this 0, 0, and 100, it's okay. Uh, so now, oops. We have the axis here, and I can go in rounded 100, add a new source at this location, and uh, with the pen tool, we will, we will add a uh, handle at the end of the stroke to make it round, but we will do it in the same time in the two sources. So I press Alt and add handle here, and if we have a look, we have the handle on the two source. Now we can oops, we can disable the deep edition. For the deep edition, we can press Command E, and it's enable or disable it. And in the round, I will move this part down, uh, this part up. And uh, with deep edition, I will just overlap uh, the handle on the point here. Same here like this, and without the deep addition, I will select this and then move it up, move it down. So now we are rounded, still compatible, but not that nice in the middle here. Maybe we can do something with a soft corner. So for the soft corner, we need to add two more points at the extreme. Same uh, with the deep addition activated. I will add a point here and here. I will do the same at the bottom quickly, uh, one here, one here, and then in the square version, disable the deep edition, I will select the point and I will overlap them uh, on the left and on the right of this, each stem. So like this, Oops. I will take the handle as well. Same thing for the point on the right, the handle. So now we should have a soft corner, a nice soft corner N. And uh, we need to do the same in the A, but what we will do for the A to go faster is just to create a source here at the wrong location, 100. And then uh, I will uh, select the deep edition mode in the N and copy the stem 
on the left and paste it still with the deep addition in the A. So I retrieve the same stem with the, the variation, the round axis, and put it on the right. And the A is done. So this was for the first axis. Uh, now we will add ink traps in it. So new new axis, uh, we'll call it ink traps. Oops. What happened? Ink traps. Ink traps. Up. Okay. Uh, for the ink traps, same thing. Uh, we'll add a new source with ink traps at 100. Select deep edition mode and add some point on the stem here. Um, move it by uh, 40 unit on the right uh, without the deep edition mode. I will align it properly horizontally here. Same here. Check for the height. So for the height, you can select some points and look at here. You have the dimension. So we see that we have at 140. Maybe we'll make 100. 30, I think it's enough. And here, uh, 114, should be 130 now, yes. Then well, I can select this point, move it on the right. Uh, if I double click on it, it becomes square, so it's not smooth anymore. And I can just move the handle here on the left. Up, maybe move a little bit this point here. So I have my A with ink traps will do the same on the end, so new source. Go in deep edition mode, I have the two points, and I will move this by 40 units. Up. It's 130, and I move this here. Okay. So still compatible, we have the ink traps, and if, if we look at the rounded, maybe we need to add a corner master here, to have better control. So easy to add. I will, oops, I will just realign this. Maybe move this a little bit on the left. And realign here. Go to near source, I guess. Up here. And I need to create um, a new source here. So realign and move this here. No, it should be good. Like this. I will now create now create a new axis, the third axis. Uh, it will be uh, the pinch axis. Uh, pinch. So the same for the pinch. Uh, we'll we we will work with the deep edition mode. The idea here here is to uh, so I create the source is to oops, I create my source is to add a point here. Oops, ah, I lost the compatibility. I need a deep edition mode. I add a point here, handle and handle here. And if I move now this point by two units on the left, oops, without the deep edition, two units on the left, and this two on the right, two on the left, two on the right. I have something that pinch a little bit like this and responds to all of the other axes. I do the same for the N, and then we will start to work on the other letters. Uh, up. So N, uh, I lost deep, deep edition mode. Up, I will add Ender here. Oops. Almost done, okay. Remove the deep edition mode, I will move it left on the right on the left and uh, if i press uh, space i have a, a clean view of what i'm working on so i will just fine tune a little bit the shape quickly like this i mean it's going to be a bit on the left try to have something nice but it's for the demo maybe it can be That's good enough. Up here with the rounded. So maybe we need to add a corner master here to have a better control of this curve. Oops. 
Um, we'll do the H now. So for the H, uh, we can just copy the N in the H and we we'll retrieve all the source. And uh, we will add a new point here in this time on the left with deep addition more once again to keep the compatibility. And then I will select the other point still with the deep addition mode. I will move them up and I have my H. Up. Like this. Same principle for the D. And copy paste in deep addition. Oops. And do in the deep edition mode up, I need to go in the source. Uh, with the deep edition mode, I will add a point here. Up, select the other point, move them up. And the D is done. Like this. Uh, now with the same principle, we will do the U, but unfortunately for now, uh, we do not have yet a transformation tool in Fontra for the outline. But Pontra is friendly with RoboFont. So to do this, I can just copy my shape here, go in RoboFont. I have prepared an empty uh, font, font, and I will open a glyph and uh, flip it nope, and copy it back on Fontra. Uh, I need to do this for each source, unfortunately. But when we will have the transformation tool in Fontra, we will be able to modify to flip uh, with the deep addition mode in one time. It will be way faster. But anyway, uh, we can use RoboFont uh, if we do not have a tool ready in Fontra. And the last one. OK, now my U is ready, but maybe a bit wide. So same with deep addition mode, I will make it a bit narrower. And uh, we will do spacing. I didn't do spacing. So here, my N was here with spacing on the left, 44. So I will do the same on the A. With the deep addition, we can do 44 on the right. And for the U, 44 on the right. And for the N, it was 37 on the left. So 37 for the U on the left. Uh, I think I have a bit of time. So I will do now the L. So for the L, I will copy the H in the L. And with the deep addition mode, once again, I will remove the right part and clean it a little bit here just by removing the point. And I will add a new point in the middle with handles and then go in the pinch version. Uh, we do not need uh, ink traps or the L, so I can remove this source and this source. And I think we can remove this source as well. And in the pinch, I will move just this point by two units on the left, and it's done for the L. Oops, like this. And for the spacing, the same, we can select all the source and put the spacing on the left. Uh, now I will work on the F, the last letter. So I copy the L in it and I will copy this shape in RoboFont, just flip it uh, by 90 degrees and paste it back. I paste it back with deep edition. So I need to remove this one and redo it for this source. So oops, once again, I need to do it for each source manually for now. OK, then I can go back in deep edition mode, make this bar narrower like this, this one as well. Work a bit on the spacing. And uh, I can move it up it's like this. We do not have yet the excite and the capite and ascender. So it will, it will come later in Fontra. Now we just need to trust our eye. Uh, almost done, I will copy this part of the bar uh, with deep edition and paste on the same place and move it up. And select these points, move them on the right. I can select this point here, move them down. Maybe the pinchy points here can go down as well. 
and uh, I will break this control. Uh, I think I have two controls because of the rounded version, and I have outlined here, uh, handles here, so I can break now this control. It will break it in all the source. And uh, theoretically, we can uh, close the control in the same time with the deep addition mode, but we just discovered before the demo that there is a bug on this. So we should be able, but for the demo, I will do it for each source one by one. For now, it will be for the next time. So to add to close control, we can select a point, go in the pen tool, add handle by pressing options, and close the control here. So now I lost the compatibility for the regular, but I will do the same for each source. I will select this point, add handle, and close my control. Do the same for this one. And um, I'm not sure if I have exactly the same curve. So what I can do is to uh, activate a view of the regular. So I have now in a gray, a light gray outline, I can see my regular. And uh, not the same position like this. So I can try to match the same curve of the regular like this. Do the same for the pinchy, pinchy one. I select. I add my points, oops, I select, oops, no, I select, I add the point. I will move this one up like this. Maybe this is too long here. I move this a little bit on the left. So for the F now, it's rounded as well. We just need to add in ink traps. So I will do it. New source for the ink traps, deep addition mode. And I will add a point here, 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 and here. Maybe we do not need the handle. I remove them. And just in the source of the ink trap, I will create my ink trap too, like this. And uh, in the pinch here, I will move down a little bit these points, like this. So now we should be able to have a nice ink trap, Ooh, big ink trap, actually. I think I need to. Move it down like this. OK. And the F is a bit wide, so in deep edition mode, we can make it go to nearer source. We can make it a bit narrower. I see that this handle go here, and this one go here. OK. So what do we have now in traps and pinchy? Ooh, there is something weird with the pinchy. I will add just a corner master to control this. And it's done for this demonstration. OK. Like this. And maybe we can add just quickly a pinch axis on the O. Up like this. <laughs> and that's done. Amazing. Thank you, Gaetan. That's uh, always wonderful to uh, to see other people uh, being uh, uh, very productive with what we're working on. Anyway, where were we? Um, I switched back to my screen. Let me see. Um, yeah, so uh, the, the, this is more or less what we wanted to, to demo. We have a few minutes left to, to speak about what we would like uh, to achieve in the near future. The things that have been long are on our list and are still on the list um, is um, uh, background layers and anchors and guidelines. Um, so that that is something we will be working on. Um, we will be improving the the font info. Uh, currently, there's no uh, yeah uh, back to to the, to the 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 font info thing. So yeah, family info. This will be about naming. Uh, sources will be about uh, naming of styles, but also about uh, like um, um, for instance the x height per. Uh, for each position in the design space, 
Uh, things that are style specific or location specific will go on the sources. Things that are more global will go under family info. Um, yeah, so um, um, at, at the same time, we've started working on a uh, build workflow that will allow us to generate fonts um, using the, the concepts and, and data created by, uh, by Fontra a bit more easily, including variable components. Uh, that is something that we will uh, uh, work on the next month and should be. Yeah, so, so there was now a pretty big gap between the previous uh, uh, demo and this one. Uh, we originally wanted to do it every month. Um, that somehow the last three months were, uh, well, also with the holiday breaks and uh, all kinds of circumstances that turned out to be uh, not feasible for us. Uh, let's see what we can do in the future. Um, I think the next one should be sooner than in three months, but maybe not in one month, but that's uh, that's still uh, open. Um, so we need to work on uh, plugins and example plugins. We need to work on more documentation. So that's, that's all um, in progress, but needs refinement and uh, uh, smoothening out. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, building fonts. So yeah, today we didn't really speak about variable components. So that's, uh, um, um, I think we covered that in, in last demo um, uh, pretty pretty well. So that concept is still very important for Fontra, but soon we will be able to turn those fonts also to compile them into regular uh, variable fonts uh, using this new uh, workflow that we're working on. We, um, um, uh, one thing that I wanted to highlight, so previously, when you would open a TTF in Fontra, Fontra pack, uh, you would get, I mean, uh, Fontra cannot directly write a TTF. So we're now looking directly at TTF data. Uh, so it's interpreting the, the, the raw binary data. Um, and, um, but uh, that is not editable. In previous versions of Fontra pack, you could play around with it. It would not be written to disk. Right now, if you try to edit it, uh, you get a little warning, the font is read only. Um, that obviously uh, now we would like a function that, oh, well, we've opened this thing in read-only mode, maybe the user would like to duplicate it into another format that is editable by Fontra. So that's also a feature that's coming pretty soon so that we can, uh, uh, you can view fonts in read-only mode, which is useful uh, all by, by itself. I mean, you can uh, uh, still select things um, and and see how they behave when you navigate the design space um but yeah of course we we would love to be able to convert this either to ufo design space ufo or to our fontra format etc cetera, etc cetera. so that um, uh, will come as well um let's see let me look at my side channel did i forget anything i think i i i, uh, I did go through all the topics uh, um, that uh, i wanted to talk about so i think we could open well the the chat should be open for people that i i hope that, did anyone manage to paste something i mean it's uh hmm. the fact that no one has that oh there's a thumbs down it doesn't work that everyone sent messages is my setting but that's apparently not the case should we uh can people can you raise a hand for instance is that possible because then we can add if you have a question okay there is a uh, okay let's see let's see let's see so what i can do let's participate so yeah so unfortunately the chat again so this is something that maybe has changed uh, so i'm just gonna i mean uh, uh, jeremy please also follow uh, uh, so if you want to write something um just raise your hand and we will uh, uh, um, let you participate and then you should be able to write in the chat and i think that's happening right now so um all right, so it's a, a little cumbersome, but at least we can. Um, so are there any questions at this point? Um, so while, let's see, do we have more cues? Um, well, 
well, maybe maybe people are not in the mood for questions, or do we have more technical issues? Um, yeah, we can also enable voice, of course. Maybe that's that's easier. I don't know exactly how to do that. Uh, there are questions. Okay. Um, let's see what's happening. Okay. Um, okay. Let's let's start at the top. Uh, custom guidelines, uh, that is definitely, uh, guidelines as you are used to them in other font editors is definitely something we will implement. Uh, initially, just uh, yeah, uh, uh, straight lines that can be either horizontal or vertical or under an angle. Um, I hope that answers that question. Um, okay, so the next question, indeed, we've been uh, uh, creating some hype, of course, that it's a collaborative tool. and um while the building blocks of fontra can do that um and we have we use that internally as an online deployment of of fontra uh, and people log in there um and indeed multiple people work on the same font i mean that that, uh, that this is a system um that uses a mysql database on a on a remote server and it has a web api and Fontra can talk to that, and that way uh, we have a team of designers that all work on the same data, more or less at the same time. I mean, eventually it will even be possible for two people to uh, uh, draw or, or look at and edit the same glyph. So, um, but uh, Fontra Pack at the moment, it's kind of like a uh, local only version of Fontra. With Fontra Pack, these things are not. Uh, directly possible so this is uh again uh conceptually fontra is prepared for these things we have internally something that works but um this is kind of hard to make uh, uh publicly available but anyway that's, that's something that we're also working on and hope to demo a bit better in the well maybe the next few months um are there more uh questions i mean i see i, I don't know if we have to uh yeah. um okay so the question is are you planning on introducing some system for metric keys a system for syncing side bearings between glyphs um i would love to uh this is indeed uh um uh, something that I see people use in other font editors very uh, productively. Um, this is not yet on our on our radar because we have too many uh, more basic things like uh, background layers, guidelines, anchors. So once we're uh, once uh, all the the, the base the core feature set is covered, then we'll start uh, making things nicer in this particular uh, yeah for for these kind of things. So this is definitely something that I'm interested in um do i do we plan implementing support for spiral curves um good question i mean at the moment um i mean it would it would be nice in general if fontra would allow different curve types not necessarily uh, necessarily uh, uh spiral specific but it would be nice if Plugins could be written that pretty much would overwrite the curve behavior of a set of points. That is not something um, uh, we're looking for right now. So we're we're mostly since this this whole project is developing in the context of actual projects that need to uh, develop uh, actual client work. Uh, we're mostly focused on on relatively standard curve systems. Uh, Santiago, hi, nice to read you. Is there a plan to have quadratic support? Is there a plan to have some quadratic support? Are you kidding me? We have quadratic support. It's like, it's the, the uh, uh, let me see, let me go back to, uh, okay, so um, dun, 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 dun. we don't have conversions, but okay, so for instance, this, uh, 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 yeah, uh, phew. So here we're actually seeing quadratic curves. So they, they have, this font is in read only. And let me briefly see if I can get the source for that. So I'm going to um, an actual design space file of the same font. This is Eric from Blocklands. And why does it not work? Let me go to the app. 
always bugs when you're doing live demos so um oh yeah of course no this this is this is the the source which is in cubics okay so i don't have a a, a data ready right here although okay uh i can actually do that let's see uh so this is part of like the the the, the workflow that we're kind of working on i have a copy command line tool if you install things from source which is not recommendable for everyone, but if I convert this to, okay, I take the TTF, I'll go to desktop, um, for demo, and this will be called mutatorsense.com. I'm gonna convert it to Fontra format. Alrighty, back to Finder. So I should find here now, um, let's see, can I drop it on here? I cannot, uh, Fontra app, where are you? So I converted it to our own internal. So now uh, this is converted from the TTF and here are quadratics and they are natively editable. And there's uh, there are some, some, some neat tricks of how, uh, um, let's see, maybe a different glyph would be uh, more useful. Um, anyway. Uh, quadratic. Yeah, there, there, there's a, there's a bunch of shortcut modifiers that that are working not only for quadratics, but I mean, uh, there's there's different ways of. Uh, uh, I mean, normally if you drag a corner, but if you press Alt, then the handle will stay. stay. So there are some alternate behaviors, uh, a little bit hidden if you press the Alt key. Uh, for instance, this is with Alt key. You can. You know, Anyway, yeah, quadratics are are natively supported. I mean, it's, it might not be perfect in all corners yet but uh, definitely something that we find important uh, so yeah where are we um uh, okay drawing quadratics too yeah so okay let me briefly show you so some of this is is kind of experimental so if i now start drawing something uh, this will actually be a cubic curve we can mix things because why not but so the hidden hidden feature is like if we go to settings oops settings there is a list of exp well, i should just call them features um there is pen tool draws quadratic so this is a little bit hidden but now i can add a uh, draw quadratic so now i actually have one curve segment that contains some cubics and some quadratics anyway this uh, this kind of works so here we have we have a curve segment quad quadratic segment with only one point Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. That's uh, uh, you get a little funky behavior some sometimes, but you know that's uh, okay. Next questions um, internally. How are you keeping records for review of this of work at this point? Uh, um, are you Aiden? Nice to read you as well. Um, are you talking about like reviewing? um The design works. Can we do reviews of other people's design in Fontra? Um, uh, so, if if that's how I interpret your question, okay, cool. This is, um, yeah, uh, such an obvious idea for Fontra. Uh, that is uh, something we're actually sketching out requirements for such a system. It's 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 a pretty big and daunting task by itself. It's kind of pretty much going to be an application within an application. Um, but yeah, uh, we like inspired by, for instance, Google Docs, uh, where you can make annotations on bits of text uh, that are attached to selection. Uh, we have plenty of ideas in that direction. Um, we actually have clients who want this and need this. Uh, so, um, but I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant to make any promises in this direction because it's, it's really, uh, we, we want to do this uh, both well and in a way that's realistic. Because, you know, every time we discuss this, we we come we get more ideas. Like, okay, it'd be cool if you could do this, and if you could paste an image, and or if you could scribble on the glyph. And yeah, all those things are true, and all those ideas are valid. But we somehow, in the end, we'll have to kind of boil it down to something that we can make, and then later extend to an even even better thing. So yeah, uh, it's a bit pie in the sky, but uh, uh, we, we'd love to build something like that. Right, more questions, perhaps. We have about five minutes left. Good questions so far. Oh, there, I skipped a question from Maurice. Hi, Maurice. Uh, plans for importing images to allow tracing drawn glyphs. There's the professor uh, uh, question. Of course, I mean, that's, uh, yeah, um, uh, plans. 
it's indeed an obvious feature that we should support. We don't have a concrete plan for that yet. Yes, uh, yeah, sorry, Maurice, indeed I missed it. I, uh, um, 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 so we do not have a, uh, written that that, uh, that down as, uh, as a core feature. Um, I think I agree with you that that's a feature that we would need, uh, especially for instance, for design students who make a drawing, place an image in the background and want to trace it. That's that's uh, um, a typical. At the moment, we're we're still mostly focusing on the needs of our our team internally at Black Foundry and 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 freelancers. So even though Fontra may look like yeah, it's missing some really obvious things. At the same time, we have. Uh, a, a, a medium-sized group of people doing actual work with it and we have to cater to their needs as well which is um, sometimes a little bit conflicting in like what we need to write for the general user but um yeah again um i would love to support that uh, but i cannot give any concrete indication on when i mean i think things like uh, kerning open type features might be uh, within our um current use case scenarios is pro might be a higher priority than than uh, importing images at the same time uh, we we re-evaluating our our, our uh, um, feature requests like regularly let's see um how that goes so good question as well uh did i miss anything else so far so yeah, um, still many things to do, um, but also things uh, that uh, we're already getting pretty proud of. I mean, I, uh, um, you know, like I said, I'm 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 amazed how how Gaetan, uh, uh just did that demo in, in the middle of our session and how he quickly whips up those things. Uh, especially you, given given that the, the create new access UI was literally uh, uh, integrated today, uh, and it's still a little bit rough at the edges, but uh, um, effective enough for for this demo. Anyway, uh, we have a couple minutes left, so uh, and if we're done, we're done. That's fine too, of course. Um, um, this session again uh, is being recorded. It will have to be post-processed, uh, will be posted on the Black Foundry channel on YouTube. Um, we will post a link to the recording. I will we will post it probably on Instagram. I will also post it on, on Typo Social, Mastodon. Uh, 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 Twitter is still used here and there. So uh, if you miss it, just ask us that that video will. Yeah, we're, we're also considering like uh, enhancing the website that there will be a, a better reference for these kind of, for these demos. So, famous last words. Well, uh, I, okay, uh, I, I see Eben, you raised your hand again. Feel free to, to ask another question uh, with a, or shall we wrap it up? Okay. Eben, I saw your hand. Did you have a question left, or was uh, no? It's okay. It's, uh, if you have a question, we can still do it. Um, if I already talked about it, that's also fine. So, well, I would say perfect timing. Thanks everyone for joining. Um, the next session will be announced again, like a bit more than a week uh, before, usually uh, on Instagram. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you for uh, to to Jeremy for host, hosting the session of Black Foundry. Thank you, Gaetan, for the, the perfect demo, and uh, thanks to all my other co-workers who who made this uh, this possible. See you next time. <laughs>